Welcome back. For the first time in its history, LifeLight has a woman at the helm of the medical service. Yeah, Dr. Leslie Osborne is only the third person to ever serve in that position, a job originally held by the legendary Dr. Red Duke. Channel 2 health reporter Haley Hernandez sits down for a Sunday conversation with Dr. Osborne. So when did you take over as the new director? Sure, July 1st was our first start date, so I took over as the medical director and then Dave Meyer took over as the assistant medical director for Life Flight. Um, it's a kind of a big deal for you because you're the f only one of three directors ever and the first female, correct? Yeah, I mean, I agree with you. It's a big deal, not in the sense that I feel like I'm a big deal, but I think that the program has a history that's pretty incredible. And especially the first person who started Life Flight in 1976, Dr. Duke, that everyone knows and loves, and especially people from Texas have of gotten course, to know him yeah. very well. Um, he set a legacy that I think will be uh, very difficult to match, but something that I think we'll continue to strive for. What's it like taking over that kind of legacy? Um, good. It's daunting. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> Not to yeah, scare you yeah, too much. I know. It's daunting. But I mean, I think it sets uh, the bar very high for, for us, and I think that that's appropriate. You know, his vision for Life Flight was to take the care we provide in the emergency department and he provided in, in the trauma OR and take it to the, the scene of the accident, to the side of the injured patient. And I think that, that view and that vision um, early on was pretty incredible and unmatched. And I still think that we have a vision that's relatively unmatched in the country. We've expanded our vision to include medical patients and pediatrics and obstetrics and uh, specialized patient care. Um, but I think we still have the same vision of, of taking what we can do in the emergency department and the OR directly to the patient, whether it be at the site of a car accident or at a, a local small rural community emergency department that needs our help and needs our care. Out of the whole country, your program sees more patients than any other hospital, right? That's true. We see about, we do about 3,000 missions a year. We are the busiest helipad in the entire country, civilian country. And so uh, it's, uh, you guys got to see it this morning. We're busy and up and running. Um, we run 24-7, 365 days a year, and I think that that's an asset to the community. So what's your background? What drew you to this position? Yeah, good question. So I um, went to Clemson University, thought I was going to complete college and go through and get my paramedic certification, and that's what I was going to do. My path changed, and I applied to medical school and got in, thankfully. And so here I am. I went to emergency medicine residency in South Carolina, and during residency got involved again in EMS. And so I started doing medical direction for a SWAT team in South Carolina. Um, and have continued to do that until recently. And, um, and then I came here to the University of Texas and Houston Fire Department and did the EMS fellowship in Houston in 2016. And that's what led me here and that's why I'm still here. And you have a military background as well? I do. So I commissioned in the Air Force um, a year and a half ago here on the helipad. So we did the ceremony here. And so I kind of continue to do the same work in the military setting that I do on the civilian side. So I'm training as a flight surgeon right now for the Air Force. What do you like so much about that? Um, I think at this point in my career, it's nice that I'm completely trained and ready to go. I think that I can be an asset to them. I think our military members um, deserve high quality care and I feel like I'm able to provide that to them. So it's nice to be a part of something that's, again, bigger than myself and I feel like I'm giving back to, to the community. Well, we're lucky to have you. Do you have future plans for Life Flight here in Houston? Sure, so I mean future plans the next few months we'll be moving to a new building and new helipad so we've got a lot of logistics to work out. Um, you know I think as uh, someone new coming in I, of course I know the crews here and I've gotten to know them over the last few years but I think part of my job is to get in and re-familiarize myself with them with the equipment with what we're doing to resuscitate patient care and kind of listen to them and see what they need from me. Um, they already provide incredible care I think on a daily basis but my job will be to come in and Dave Meyer's job will be to come in and, and help bolster the education make sure they have all the equipment and the training that they need to continue to provide the high-level care. Mm -hmm. A lot of Houston may not realize that you guys have a whole big brand new tower going up. Is the public going to notice any change when you guys open up that tower in the new year? Um, other than the building being nice and pretty and brand new, they should not notice a change at all from Life Flight. The second that that helipad goes live, we will start landing there and taking care of patients the same way we take care of them here. We will be ready. The emergency department will be ready and the trauma service will be ready.